Good morning and good yantif. The Maggid of Meserich Dov Ber taught there were 13 gates to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, one for each of the 12 tribes and one for those who did not know the tribe to which they belonged. So also there are 13 gates of prayer, each with its own manner of entrance. All individuals must choose their own gate and enter into prayer in their own way. And so let us begin. I'm Rabbi Amy Ehrlich, joined on the Bima by Rabbi Sarah Sepadin, Rabbi Andrew Kahn, and Cantor Sarah Anderson, who has been part of our community for the last two years as a student. And now we welcome her leadership and her scholarship as she joins us as a cantor. Rhoda Altman honors us by representing our congregation this morning. And now that you know who we are, please turn to those around you to wish them a Gamar Tov. May you be sealed in the book. As we turn to page 38, we continue with Matovu. continue on page 127. This is the day of God. On this day we are called to the sanctuary by a summons as exalting and enduring as the everlasting hills. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. This is the day of awe. What are we as we stand in your presence, O God? A leaf in the storm, 
a fleeting moment in the flow of time, a whisper lost among the stars. This is the day of decision. Today we invoke you as the molder of our destiny. Help us to mend the evil of our ways, to right the heart's old wrongs. On this Sabbath of the soul, inscribe us for blessing in the book of life. This is the day of our atonement. We would return to you as penitent children long to return to a loving parent. We confess our sins on this day, knowing that the gates of repentance are always open. Receive us with compassion and bless us with your forgiving love. Please rise as you are able for Baruch Hu. Maker of darkness and dawn, the God who opens the gates of mercy, who gives light to all who await forgiveness, be with us on this atonement day. God, God of, of times, times and seasons, seasons be, be with, with us, us this day. day. God of hope and joy, be with us this day. God, God of the of loving, loving heart, heart be, be with, with us this day. day. Be with us as we look for strength to be free, freedom to struggle against those who worship power, and power to resist all who would oppress us. God of freedom and right, be with us this day. We rise for Shema on page 130. As we say together, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be upon thy heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt speak of them when thou sittest in thy house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be for frontlets between thine eyes. Thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thy house and upon thy gates, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. 
I am the Lord your God who led you out of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. Mi kamocha baheli madonai, mi kamocha nedar va kodesh nora nora, nora tehilot osefele.
page 134. On Rosh Hashanah we reflect, on Yom Kippur we consider, who shall live for the sake of others? Who dying shall leave a heritage of life? Who shall burn with the fires of greed? Who shall drown in the waters of despair? Whose hunger shall be for the good? Whose thirst for the justice and right? Whose tongue shall be a thrusting sword? Whose words shall make for peace? Who shall be plagued by fear of the world? Who shall strangle for lack of friends? Who shall rest at the end of the day? Who shall lie sleepless on a bed of pain? Who shall go forth in the quest for truth? Who shall be locked in the prison of self? Who shall be serene in every storm? Who shall be troubled by the passing breeze? Who shall be poor in the midst of possessions? Who shall be rich, content with their lot? Repentance, prayer, and charity, these return us to our God. Forgiven the past, renewed for tomorrow, may we go forth with rejoicing to a year of great goodness. Let us proclaim the sacred power of this day. It is awesome and full of dread. For on this day your dominion is exalted, your throne established in steadfast love. There in truth you reign. In truth you are judge and arbiter, counsel and witness. You write and you seal, you record and recount. You remember deeds long forgotten. You open the book of our days, and what is written there proclaims itself, for it bears the signature of every human being. 
together. The great shofar is sounded, the still small voice is heard, the angels gripped by fear and trembling declare in awe, this is the day of judgment, for even the hosts of heaven are judged as all who dwell on earth stand arrayed before you. As the shepherd seeks out the flock and makes the sheep pass under the staff, so do you muster and number and consider every soul, setting the bounds of every creature's life and decreeing its destiny.
Rosh Hashanah it is written, on Yom Kippur it is sealed. How many shall pass on and how many shall come to be? Who shall live and who shall die? Who shall see ripe age and who shall not? Who shall perish by fire and who by water? Who by sword and who by beast? Who by hunger and who by thirst? Who by earthquake and who by plague? who by strangling and who by stoning, who shall be secure and who shall be driven, who shall be tranquil and who shall be troubled, who shall be poor and who shall be rich, who shall be humbled and who exalted, but repentance, prayer and charity, temper judgment, severe decree. This is your glory. You are slow to anger, ready to forgive. It is not the death of sinners you seek, but that they should turn from their ways and live. Until the last day you wait for them, welcoming them as soon as they turn to you. You have created us and know what we are. We are but flesh and blood. Our origin is dust and dust is our end. Each of us is a shattered urn, grass that must wither, a flower that will fade, a shadow moving on, a cloud passing by, a particle of dust floating on the wind, a dream soon forgotten. But you are the sovereign, the everlasting God. Please rise.
145. Our God and God of all generations, bless us with the threefold benediction of the Torah. Continue on page 148 with Vidui, the confession of sin. For transgressions against God, 
the day of atonement atones. But for transgressions of one human being against another, the day of atonement does not atone until they have made peace with one another. I hereby forgive all who have hurt me, all who have wronged me, whether deliberately or inadvertently, whether by word or by deed. May no one be punished on my account. As I forgive and pardon those who have wronged me, may those whom I have harmed forgive and pardon me, whether I acted deliberately or inadvertently, whether by word or by deed. Please rise. Together, Our God and God of our mothers and fathers, grant that our prayers may reach you. Do not be deaf to our pleas, for we are not so arrogant and stiff-necked as to say before you, our God and God of all ages, we are perfect and have not sinned. Rather, do we confess, we have gone astray, we have sinned, we have transgressed. You may be seated as we continue with silent confession on pages 149 and 150.
751. Who among us is righteous enough to say, I have not sinned? We are arrogant, brutal, careless, destructive, egocentric, false, greedy, heartless, insolent, and joyless. Our sins are an alphabet of woe. Now may it be your will, O God of all generations, to pardon all our sins, to forgive all our wrongdoings, and to blot out our transgressions. Continue responsively. We sin against you when we sin against ourselves. For our failures of truth, O God, we ask forgiveness. For passing judgment without knowledge of the facts and for distorting facts to fit our theories. For deceiving ourselves and others with half-truths and for pretending to emotions we do not feel. For using the sins of others to excuse our own and for denying responsibility for our own misfortunes, for condemning in our children the faults we tolerate in ourselves, and for condemning in our parents the faults we tolerate in ourselves. We sin against you when we sin against ourselves. For our failures of justice, O oh God, we ask forgiveness, for keeping the poor in the chains of poverty and turning a deaf ear to the cry of the oppressed, for using violence to maintain our power, and for using violence to bring about change, for waging aggressive war, and for the sin of appeasing aggressors, for obeying criminal orders, and for the sin of silence and indifference, for poisoning the air and polluting land and sea, and for all the evil means we employ to accomplish good ends. We sin against you when we sin against ourselves. For our failures of love, O oh God, we ask forgiveness. For confusing love with lust and for pursuing fleeting pleasure at the cost of lasting hurt. For using others as a means to gratify our desires and as stepping stones to further our ambitions. For withholding love to control those who we claim to love and shunting aside those whose youth or age disturbs us, for hiding from others behind an armor of mistrust, and for the cynicism which leads us to mistrust the reality of unselfish love. For all these sins, O God of mercy, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. Page 154.
Please rise and turn to page 156 for Seder Kriyat HaTorah. The Eternal One, the Eternal God, is merciful and gracious, endlessly patient, loving, and true, showing mercy to thousands, forgiving iniquity, transgression, and sin, and granting pardon. Continue responsively on 157. Avinu Malkenu Chatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkenu, we have sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu Hachazirenu Bechuvash Lema Lefanecha. Avinu Malkenu, bring us back to you in full repentance. Avinu Malkenu Slachu Machal Lechol Avonotenu. Avinu Malkenu, forgive and pardon all our misdeeds. Avinu Malkenu, chamol alenu va'al ol alenu v'tapenu. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and on our children. Avinu Malkenu, kale dever v'cherev v'rav me'alenu. Avinu Malkenu, make an end to sickness, war, and famine. Avinu Malkenu, kodvenu v'sefer chaim tovim. 
Avinu Malkeinu, inscribe us for blessing in the book of life. Avinu Malkeinu, Chadesh Aleinu Shana Tova. Avinu Malkeinu, let the new year be a good year for us. Avinu Malkeinu, Ase Imanu Laman Shemecha. Avinu Malkeinu, help us to exalt your name in the world. Avinu Malkeinu, Kabel Barachamim Uvratzon et Tefilatenu. Avinu Malkeinu, in your mercy accept our prayer. Avinu Malkeinu, Honenu Vaanenu, Ki Ein Banu Maasim. Ase Imanu, Tzedaka Vachesed Vahoshienu. Avinu Malkeinu, be gracious and answer us, for we have little merit. Treat us generously with kindness and be our help. My covenant with them, says the Eternal One. Let not my spirit and the words that I have put in your mouth depart from you, nor from your children or their children, from this time forth and forever. Please be seated to 
uh, call up Stephanie Goldman Rosen as our honoree for the blessing of the Torah. This morning, the cantor will be chanting from Nitzavim, the traditional Torah portion for Yom Kippur, in which the covenant is sealed with the Israelites through Moses. And not just with the Israelites present there, but all of us who too are descendants of those Israelites. We hear in this Torah portion that all of the people were called before God, all the men, women, and children to seal this covenant, and that all those who were to come later were also present spiritually. Baruch et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vaed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alom. Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Ha'amim. Vatan Lanu et Torah To. Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem. Lifnei Adonai Eloichem, Roshichem, Shivtechem, Ziknechem, Beshot Rechem, Kol Ish Yisrael, Tapchem, Neshechem, Vegerecha, Asher Bekerev Machanecha, Mechotei Vetzacha, Ad Shoev Memecha, Leovracha, Bivrit, Adonai Elohecha, Uvalato, Asher Adonai Elohecha, Koretim ha hayom, leman hakimot ha hayom lo leam, vehu yihielacha lelohim, ka asher tiberlach, vecha asher nishpa lavotecha, lavraham leitzchak ul yakov, velo itchem lavadchem, anochi, koret et habrit hazot, ve et hazot. Ki et asher yeshno po imanu omeid hayom lifne adonai eloheinu ve et asher einenu po imanu hayom ki hamitzvah hazot asher anochim etzavcha hayom lo nifleti mimcha ve lo rechokahi lo vashamayim hi le. Mialelanu Hashamaima, be Kahe Halanu, be Ashmienu Ota Venasena, Belome Ever Layam, he lay more. Miavorlanu Elever Hayam, be Kahe Halanu, be Ashmienu Ota Venasena, Kikaro Velecha, Hadavar me od, Befiha Ulvavecha la Aso. Renatati le faneha hayom, et a hayim ve et a tov, betama vet vetara, asher anohim et avra hayom, la hava et adona hayelo hecha, la lechet bidrahav, belishmor, mitzvotav hukotav, umishbatav. Vechayita veravita, uverachacha, adonaha elohecha, Baaretz, asherata vashama lerishta, ve im yifne levavcha velotishma, ve nidachta, ve hishtachavita, lelohim acherim va avatam. He got Tilachem Hayom, Ki Avot Tovedun, Lotarihun Yamim, Alha Adama, Asherata over at Hayardain, Lavo Shama Lerishta, Haidoti Vachem Hayom. Et Hashamayim ve'ta'aretz, Hachayim ve'hamavet, Natati lefanecha, Habracha ve'haklala. Uvacharta v'chayim leman tichye ata v'zarecha, Le'ahavaha et Adonai Elohecha, Lishmoa bekolo ledov kavoy, Ki hu chayecha ve'orech yamecha, La shevet al hadama, 
asher nishpa Adonai la avotecha le Abraham le Yitzchak ul Yaakov la tet lahem. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Alom asher natan lanu Torah imet v'chayu olam natan but. Betochenu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Naten HaTorah. Now privileged to invite Michael Stryker up to read our Haftarah this morning, which comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 58, verses 1 through 14. The verses of Isaiah are the classical prophetic cry for justice and atonement that goes beyond what we imagine today towards a world more perfect towards a world that fulfills the great decrees of the Torah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher bachar, bin vihim tovim, ratzah v'divrehem, hanemarim be'emet, Baruch atah Adonai, Havocher batora, Uv Moshe Avto, Uv Israel Amo, Uv Inviye Haemet Vatzedek. God says, Cry with a full throat, do not hold back. Let your voice resound like a shofar. Declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sin. Yes, they seek me daily as though eager to learn my ways, as if they were a people that does what is right and has not forsaken the way of its God. They ask of me the right way, as though delighting in the nearness of God. When we fast, you say, why do you pay no heed? When we afflict ourselves, do you take no notice? Because on your fast day, you pursue your own affairs while you oppress all your workers. Because your fasting leads only to strife and discord while you strike with cruel fist. Such a way of fasting on this day will not help you to be heard on high. Is this the fast I have chosen, a day of self-affliction, bowing your head like a reed and covering yourself with sackcloth and ashes? Is this what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the eternal? Is not this the fast I have chosen, to unlock the shackles of injustice, to loosen the ropes of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to tear every yoke apart? Surely it is to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house. When you see the naked to cover them, never withdrawing yourself from your own kin. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall quickly blossom. Your righteous one will walk before you. The glory of the eternal one will be your rear guard. Then, when you call, the eternal one will answer. When you cry, God will say, here I am. If you remove lawlessness from your midst, the pointing finger, the malicious word. If you give yourself to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall shine in the darkness and your night become bright as noon. The eternal one will guide you always, filling your throat in parched lands and renewing your body's strength. You shall be like a garden overflowing with water, like a spring that never fails. Some of you shall rebuild ancient ruins, rebuilding the foundations of ages past. You shall be called repairer of the breach, restorer of the streets to dwell in. If you keep from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own affairs on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight, the eternal one's holy day honored, if you honor it, abstaining from journeys, from carrying on your own affairs or speaking of them, then you shall delight in the eternal one. I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth 
and I will feed you with the portion of Jacob, your father. The Eternal One has spoken. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, tzur kol ha'olam ihim tzadik b'chol ha'dorot, ha'el ha'neman ha'omer ve'oseh, ha'medaber u'mekayim, she'kol devarav emet v'tzedek. Al ha'torah ve'al ha'avodah ve'al ha'nevim, ve'al yom ha'kipurim ha'zeh, she'natat ha'lanu, Adonai Eloheinu, limchila ve'lisli We continue now with prayers for our congregation, our people. Eternal God, we pray to you for the whole house of Israel, scattered, scattered over the earth, yet bound together by a common history and united by a common heritage of faith and hope. Be with our brothers and sisters whose lives are made hard because they are Jews. Give them strength to endure and lead them soon from darkness to light. Bless this holy congregation and all who serve it together with all other holy congregation in all lands near and far. Uphold us, shield us, and bestow upon us abundant life and health and peace and happiness in all our dwelling places. Bring to fulfillment the blessing of Moses. The eternal, your God, make you a thousand times as many as you are and bless you. And we say together, amen. O oh God, Send your healing to the sick, your comfort to all who are in pain or anxiety, your tender love to the sorrowing hearts among us. If any present today are themselves thinking of someone in need of comfort, in need of healing, in need of the love of God, I invite you to share their names aloud now, even if it is your own. Be their refuge through their time of trial as they pass from weakness to strength, from suffering to consolation, from lonely fear to the courage of faith. Amen. Together, we pray for all who hold positions of leadership and responsibility in our national life. Let your blessing rest upon them and make them responsive to your will so that our nation may be to the world an example of justice and compassion. Deepen our love for our country and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our nation's welfare. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. Cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our nation is in the hands of all its citizens imbue us with zeal for the cause of liberty in our own land and in all lands, and help us always to keep our home safe from affliction, strife, and war. Amen. We pray for the land of Israel and its people. May its borders know peace, its inhabitants tranquility, and may the bonds of faith and fate which unite the Jews of all lands be a source of strength to Israel and to us all. God of all lands and ages, answer our constant prayer with a Zion once more aglow with light for us and for all the world. And let us say, Amen. Please rise.
According to the mystics, before God created this world, God created many others. Though these worlds were perfectly beautiful, they were fundamentally lacking. In these previous worlds, writes Rabbi Seymour Russell, everything was without flaw, but the real spark of life, freedom, free will, the opportunity and ability to choose good from evil, these were missing. Not so in our world. At the heart of this creation and at the core of our existence is the ability to choose. And so it is with Yom Kippur. At the heart of this sacred observance is this ability to choose. Rabbi Harvey Fields writes, Every year at Yom Kippur, one is afforded the opportunity to determine one's own life for better. This holy day teaches us our greatest gift. Freedom of choice is given. For all of us whose souls are heavy with longing to be better, to do better, to work better, to love better. Our tradition teaches us we can choose a path towards change. And for all of us who feel caught in the grooved patterns of our lives or trapped by decisions made long ago, our faith affirms we have the power to move ourselves forward, to choose a new direction. Today, choice is both a gift and an obligation. The freedom to choose opens up new possibilities as we enter Yom Kippur. But the responsibility to choose is essential to the work of atonement. According to Rabbi Leo Beck, atonement is no mere act of grace or miracle of salvation. It demands the free ethical choice and deed of the human being. Therefore, we cannot be granted atonement unless we choose to repent. And we cannot be forgiven unless we choose to make amends. And we cannot rehabilitate ourselves or our relationships unless we choose to examine our behavior. On Yom Kippur, we are asked to choose again and again. It is a mandate, but so too is it an affirmation that we are capable of making such choices, even in matters of life and death, as is evidenced by our Torah reading this morning in which we heard the words, I have set before you life and death, choose life. Our commentaries note the explicit choice given to the Israelites here. They, like us, have the power to choose between these two paths, one which promotes life and the other, death. While the text clearly privileges life, the ultimate choice is up to us. God will not choose for us. We are duty-bound to choose for ourselves. Maimonides, the great medieval scholar, wrote, one shouldn't believe the theory that God decrees whether a person should be righteous or evil. It's not true. Every person can be righteous like Moses or wicked like King Jeroboam. The choice is up to us. In this sanctuary, today and every day, we affirm every person's fundamental right to choose. But outside this sanctuary, this right is under threat. In the wake 
of the June 24th Supreme Court Dobbs versus Jackson ruling, which overturned Roe v. Wade, eliminating the federal right to an abortion and dispensing with nearly 50 years of precedent, we are now living in a world where access to abortion care has been removed from millions of people in desperate need of such support. As I stand here today, abortion is virtually banned in 14 states of our nation, and in four more states, abortions are highly restricted. It is projected that about half of the United States will establish abortion bans or strict gestational limits to abortion in the near future. Former Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer, along with Justices Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor, describe this stark new reality in their blistering dissent. As of today, this court holds. A state can always force a woman to give birth, prohibiting even the earliest abortions. A state can thus transform what, when freely undertaken, is a wonder into what, when forced, may be a nightmare. It has been said on this bima many times before, but it bears repeating Abortion justice is a Jewish issue. As Sheila Katz, CEO of the National Council of Jewish Women, reminds us, one in four people who can become pregnant will have an abortion by age 45. And that includes people in the Jewish community. Our tradition views abortion as essential health care not only permitted, but in some cases commanded when a life is at risk. On this holy day of Yom Kippur, a day when freedom of choice infuses every word we utter and every ritual we perform, we decry the tragic loss of reproductive freedom and choice in our nation. This morning, we add our voices to the outpouring of moral indignation that has exploded across the Jewish spectrum in response to the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Our own reform movement has stood firm in its support for abortion justice, with leaders like Rabbi Marla Feldman, executive director of Women of Reform Judaism, stating, we are outraged that the Supreme Court has stripped women and others who can become pregnant of the fundamental right to make essential health care decisions without governmental interference. The Rabbinical Assembly representing conservative rabbis also asserts, denying individuals access to the complete spectrum of reproductive health care deprives those who need medical care of their constitutional right to religious freedom. And in the Orthodox community, prominent thought leaders, Rabbi Dove Linzer and Rabbi Sarah Hurwitz released this statement just prior to the decision coming down. To deny women the right to choose is to assume they cannot be responsible to give this consequential decision the full weight that it deserves. It is to infantilize women, to exhibit a lack of trust in them, to be responsible moral agents. They add, in the case of women committed to Jewish law, this decision is to rob them of the ability to be true, not only to the dictates of their conscience, but to their faith as well. The words of condemnation affirm, abortion bans do not reflect our Judaism. Denying abortion access and eliminating a person's ability to decide in matters of reproductive health is an affront 
to our Jewish faith, a faith which does not criminalize abortions, a faith which prioritizes the health and well-being of the pregnant person, and a faith which upholds the inviolability of bodily autonomy. In a 1990 essay entitled Reform Judaism, Bioethics, and Abortion, the late rabbi and philosopher Alvin Rhinus wrote, it is a violation of reform Jewish principles to usurp a woman's right to self-authority in the matter of abortion. And no governmental decree can be accepted that violates the moral integrity and religious practices of reform Jews. No impulse in humans is a greater evil than the rage to exercise authority over others. It is this demonic lust which must be challenged. And challenge we will, because as Jews, we cannot and will not stand by as our fundamental rights to health, dignity, and autonomy are callously and cruelly trampled. Nor can we stand by knowing that those deprived of abortion care are more likely to end up financially insecure or trapped in abusive relationships as a result of that denied care. And we cannot stand by knowing that draconian abortion laws amplify structural inequities that already exist in this country, disproportionately harming those who are struggling economically, those who identify as black, indigenous, or people of color, those who are immigrants, young people, people with disabilities, individuals in rural communities, trans men and non-binary people too, all risk harm with this decision. On this Yom Kippur, we challenge this assault to our rights and our faith by heeding the call at the core of this sacred day, the call to choose. Choose our Torah commands us. Choose to fight for moral agency. Choose to stand up for reproductive freedom. Choose to protect the fundamental right to bodily autonomy. But the call to choose doesn't end there. It continues. I have set before you life and death. Choose life that you may live. Yes, we challenge this ruling by choosing life. That phrase, so closely associated with anti-abortion activists, does not belong to them. Today, we must talk about what it means to choose life for the safety and dignity of the pregnant person. Decades ago, before Roe had been decided, Baptist minister Harris Wilson, a man responsible for setting up a clergy service for those seeking abortion, wrote a letter about what it meant to choose for the life of the pregnant person. As a minister, he began, I must consider the human trauma of a live, breathing woman and her interests over against the interests, whatever they may be, of a fertilized ovum. There are millions for whom abortion is a matter of conscience to be protected by the society in which they live. Minister Wilson urges us to remember that the individual seeking abortion care is a person, a person with hopes, dreams, and fears, a person who feels and hurts, 
a person making their way through life just like you and me. Those who seek abortion care aren't any different from us. They are our family and friends, our colleagues and co-workers. They are all of us and we are them. Rabbi Rachel Pass, a reform colleague who has written powerfully about her own abortion experience, offers these words on the notion of choosing life. What does it mean, she asks, that the life of the pregnant person comes before that of the fetus? She goes on to answer. It means that the pregnant person's physical needs and pain levels are prioritized over the birthing of a child. It means that their mental health is prioritized over the birthing of the child. It means that their dignity and honor are prioritized over the birthing of the child. It means that the primary consideration in the Jewish question of abortion is the needs of the person giving birth, their life, their health, their dignity. Rabbi Pass concludes by saying there is nothing more sacred than the right to live one's life as one chooses. In having an abortion, I chose my life. So yes, today we choose life to safeguard the health, dignity, and future of the pregnant person. We choose life to prevent another pregnant person from dying of ectopic pregnancy or life-threatening sepsis after an incomplete miscarriage. And we choose life to validate the unfathomable pain of discovering a pregnancy is no longer viable. We choose life to guard against the trauma of forcibly having to carry an unwanted pregnancy to term. And we choose life to protect and care for those who've been impregnated by rape or incest. We choose life that the pregnant person might live, that they might be able to take care of themselves and their existing children their families and dependents. And we choose life that they might continue with their schooling or career paths. We choose life to honor the hope and promise of a bright future. After all, as writer Lori Penny reminds us, this pregnant person might be the next Mozart or Mandela. Yes, we choose life to avert the proven increases in poverty, debt, and partner violence that happens when pregnant people are denied abortion. And we choose life so that pregnant people might avoid deportation on account of said pregnancies. We choose life in order that a pregnant person's gender identity might not be compromised, nor their body ruthlessly subjected to violence. Yes, today and every day, we choose life so that pregnant people might survive, recognizing what Justices Breyer Kagan and Sotomayor pointed out in their dissent. An American woman is 14 times more likely to die by carrying a pregnancy to term than by having an abortion. The urgent appeal in our tradition to choose life is not abstract. It is real and tangible and actionable on this Yom Kippur, we can and must choose life by involving ourselves in the work of abortion justice, by reaching out to organizations already active on the ground, organizations like the National Council of Jewish Women, with whom we at Emmanuel have partnered many times, 
so too we can make a difference by learning about the specific work of reproductive justice, an approach that frames this struggle through the lens of racial and economic disparity and has been and continues to be led by black women and other women of color, Sister Song is one such organization leading this charge. But perhaps the greatest impact we can make right now is financial. The Jewish Fund for Abortion Access, for example, provides emergency relief to those directly impacted by abortion bans. The fund pays for, for travel, abortion care, and counseling for all those in need of such support during this exceptionally fraught time. It is nothing less than a lifeline at a moment when so many lives hang in the balance. One need only listen to the testimony of those who've been there. A woman from Michigan shares, I was in an abusive relationship, severely depressed, and in my first semester of law school, an abortion saved my life. A woman from California echoes, my abortion saved my life. I had an ectopic pregnancy which put my life at risk. I couldn't risk leaving my two children motherless. Christina Ward, an artist and photographer, adds, my teen years were marked with instability and painful family struggles. I was struggling emotionally. I know my abortion saved my life. These are but three stories out of scores all of which convey the very same message. An abortion can mean the difference between life and death. On this Yom Kippur day, as our Torah calls out to us, I have set before you life and death. May we do everything in our power to choose life for every pregnant person across the nation. May we strive relentlessly to ensure that all pregnant people have the right to make their own moral, ethical, and faith-based decisions about their bodies, their health, and their futures. And may we immerse ourselves in advocacy and activism to protect the critical abortion access we currently have and expand it where it has been severely restricted or eliminated. May we give generously of ourselves, our time, and our resources to all of those facilitating life-affirming and life-saving abortion care to pregnant patients in need. And may we, guided by God's loving example, commit ourselves to creating a community where anyone impacted by pregnancy termination feels supported, welcomed, and embraced. Our Jewish values grounded in the preservation of human dignity and the pursuit of justice demand nothing less. Today, we choose life. Tomorrow, we fight for it.
down and out when you're on the street when evening falls so hard I will comfort you Friends, good yontif, and just a few announcements about the rest of the day. Um, due to the weather, all of our services will be held in the temple. Study sessions begin at 12.30 with Dr. Lawrence Hoffman, who will speak on who shall live and who shall die. Really? And that will be in Greenwald Hall. Dr. Joel Hoffman, do only the wicked suffer? reward and punishment, and the hidden message of the High Holidays, and that will be in the Bethel Chapel. And our Bernard Museum curator, Warren Klein, will speak on Through the Archives, Our Crowd, and that will be in Wise Hall. At 12.30, our teen service will now take place in the Lowenstein Sanctuary, enter through East 66th Street, at 2 p.m., come back, join us here in the main sanctuary for the Avodah service, whose moving poetry and vibrant melodies tell the sacred story of our people. Our family service will be held at the same time at 2 p.m. in the Lowenstein Sanctuary, along with a visit from a very special guest an afternoon memorial and concluding services are here at 3.30. And as we wish you and yours a meaningful day of introspection, we also look to tomorrow when Tikkun Olam starts an apple and honey drive to address food insufficiency. And we thank you for participating in that. So we'll see you very soon.